All right, folks, welcome back. Game nine of AlphaGo versus the world. Chris Garlock here with Michael Redman. Uh, Michael, this is a pretty exciting game in this series, isn't it? It's got a couple of interesting things going for it. Exactly. Uh, the, the human player is Min Tai Ling, and he's a sixth down at the time of the game. Um, I think he promoted to seven down after that. Um, but I remember him as a, a great um, commentator and a presenter. Um, mm -hmm. on the internet at Weiji TV. So um, to probably Chinese TV also, but he, I was watching him on the internet, sort of like uh -huh. a YouTube presenter. So he's kind of the Michael Redmond of China, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'd be honored to have him called that. Um, cool. And he was great. Like I was watching his programs, um, not really understanding the Chinese, but I was just enjoying the, the goal that he was presenting. And All he, right. He actually did a number of videos on AlphaGo itself. Nice. So, All right. Well, we're, uh, we've got some exciting, we're, we're not going to give it away. We have some exciting things that are going to happen, but let's jump right into the game. And Wen Tangling, his style I like also, he was a fairly prominent player, um, and he plays a modern game. So he plays a fairly fast-paced opening, and he doesn't go for those tight uh, knights, shimaris, and stuff like that <clears throat> that were actually very popular at the time of this game. You'll see a lot of players playing very tight style, and then AlphaGo gets, just gets all over the board and makes these huge moyos. And so he's not the player who allows his opponent to do that. But now, maybe you recognize this board position. We've done it before. Yeah. And when AlphaGo is black, plays this big Shimari here, it was the standard thing for white either to split the right side or to play this Kakari and if black answers to go to the center of the side. So either right. this way or otherwise um, in some games. And we're gonna see a lot of these games, this opening when AlphaGo has black because Al AlphaGo really likes this Shimari here on the, in the lower right corner in this case. He, it really likes this Shimari and his opponents um, have researched this opening for a while and they have been playing this way with white with reasonable success. So this is the standard way for white to handle it, unless mm -hmm. white uh, just plays in the center of the side. It's one of these two variations. And off go plays here. And again, we're up to the point where human players at this time thought that white should play a pincer. So everyone plays a pincer. So Mon Tailing plays a pincer too, right? But <laughs> AlphaGo already feels that AlphaGo has a lead. Right. And as I said before, it's sort of interesting because when the human player has just split the side without this marked exchange in the upper right, AlphaGo is going to play the knight move here. But when black has played, uh, when white has played that marked exchange in the upper right corner, for some reason, AlphaGo was choosing the Taisha Joseki. And I remember at the time, I studied this to find a variation of the Taisha Joseki which would make that Mark Blackstone a, a ladder breaking move. So oh, this I remember variation. that, yeah. Yes, so I, I sort of like this variation. I have no proof at all that this is what AlphaGo <laughs> was thinking of because it never happened. But when this variation, which has been around for hundreds of years actually, there was a period in Japan uh, hundreds of years ago, a kind of a gold era in Japan, when people were researching a lot of Joseki and Taisa, the Taisa Joseki here with black um, playing this large knight's move was very popular. So there was a lot of research done on it. And when white plays this way, the fact that when white cuts and plays here, if the ladder favors black, obviously this is going to be bad for white. So the ladder is going to hit this black stone. Got it. Favors black. So this is this was my hypothesis, and it still is actually. Um, but of course, when black plays here in actual play, since the ladder is good for black, white will probably just play something like this. And it's mm -hmm. a completely different game, which is uh, reasonably close. It's not as if this is bad for white. But once white plays this move, which was again, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, it was the most popular move at this time. And everyone who plays against AlphaGo in this series is gonna choose this move because it's supposed to be good for white. And they're stuck with that idea, and every time they play it, I think the player just um, has an idea that he or she can do better than the last person, 
with something later on. But actually, as far as AlphaGo is concerned, this is already uh, an advantage for uh, for Black. It's it's so funny, Michael. I almost imagine you know AlphaGo going like, "How many times do I have to <laughs> do I have to kick your butt with this variation before y'all figure this out?" You know, I mean. It just they, they keep playing it and it keep and AlphaGo keeps doing the same thing. Yeah, well, I should include myself in the mistake because we thought that uh, when White Crow's here, um, playing that honey on the fourth line is so such a great shape for White that obviously Black is going to extend here. Right. That means White's going to get a, an extra move to play something on the left side. That could be nice. any right. move close to the upper left corner. So this is White's plan, and if this does happen, it's perfectly fine for White. Sure. This sure. is the plan that White has. And we sort of had a block that Black would actually play away and allow White to do this. It was something that was hard for us to conceive. But it turns out that it's very difficult for White to um, set up uh, an efficient attack against this Black group. Wow. And everyone is going to try to do that part of it in a slightly different way. So they have their own ideas about how it's supposed to work. But of course, AlphaGo is going to say, uh, White was actually supposed to continue on the left side. And this point here, which we thought was a super important point, is pretty irrelevant, actually. And it's wow. uh, no, one, no one wants to play it anymore. Uh, in this case, it would be something like this. And White would have a difficult choice. In some other vid videos, I might be showing you maybe White plays here. And in some videos, I might talk about what happens if White plays here. All of these variations are slightly difficult for White. Another option would be to play here. You can see that white is sort of um, offering to give up the left side in this variation. And the judgment of the position is going to be very, very difficult for both sides. And it is a position that will be more difficult for the human player than it is for the AI. So mm -hmm. um, I would just go back and say that white should have played that that other variation in the, in the Taisha Joseki maybe. And this would have been giving a better score. And it would be a position that human players uh, are happier to be playing. It's more more in our style. But white played the honey here. It's supposed to be a vital point. Black plays here. Um, again, probably white should have played here, but already black has a very good score here. Um, close to 60% right now, I think. And when white plays in the game, White plays here, taking advantage of the weak point in Black's wall, but Black is just going to sacrifice those stumps like this. And like it's so, so easy to do this. Black's not doing anything this difficult at all. It's just the fact that the it's very difficult for humans to judge this position correctly sometimes. Mm. White curls around. And I was really impressed with this move where Black does not play what is intuitive would be to play a honey here. Sure. But that would actually give up the four stones. So black is just going to live in the corner. With this move, black already has a living shape. And black is leaving the potential to extend here later in the game. And although wow. that's uh, like that's an empty triangle, it looks like a terrible shape, it is going to be a better than even fight in the center of the board. So white actually had to spend one more move to get rid of that threat. And at this point, now, now it's going to be difficult for Black if Black does that. It's just the one extra white stone there in the center is going to make a difference. But while White was spending all these moves to get a good position here, all of White's moves have been focused on getting a good position in this part of the board. Black has just about played everything else on the game in the game. Like The rest of the board is sort of covered with Black stones, as if Black had played two or three moves at once. And this area that I've circled where white has created this strong position, it's pretty much uh, nullified in its efficiency because black has this shimari right there in the lower right corner, right in the way where white wants to ex expand the territories, right in the wave white. So uh, it's very just, difficult. Uh, I'm just doing a quick count there, you know, with all of you know, the, the, the territory for white there is actually not that big. I mean, it feels big to capture those stones, but I, I don't. I think it's maybe not even thirty points, right? I it's mean, not thirty points. Like I would just count this area here on the second and first lines. That's right. And since and White can play on in the corner, White can play this move with Sente. So it's going to be more than ten points. But if we just count 
uh, the ten, the four stones here. That's just eight points. And not even fair. if yeah. we look at those two marked stones in the lower right corner, they're just taking away most of White's potential to expand. So you can't really count beyond that twenty points. And look at that's, all those black stones. Too many, too many. There's too many stones. Yeah. And so this is already like it's already very very bad for White. Um, I really like this move. This is a move I've played a number of times myself. It's a slightly unusual move, but it's very efficient at taking away White's base. So mm -hmm. White does not have a living shape in the corner. And from this point, um, this is one game that I might be going into more detail in the book. It's a very yeah. interesting game on the whole. And there's a little bonus at the end, actually. Ooh, a um, little, so a little Easter egg. Here. I'm going to stop here and take you later into the game. Uh, to this position um, in the center of the board, this is the final stages of the game. And you can see all of Black's territories are established at this point. And the on only issue is, how is Black going to reduce White's territory in the center of the board? And AlphaGo at this point, um, actually, I'll, uh, I, can't, I don't know what percentage AlphaGo is giving itself, but programs like Leela and Katago are giving Black a very high winning percentage. Like Katago I was giving Black something like 95%. <laughs> and Black continues this way to capture the four stones. So Black has captured these four white stones. Right. So far, according to, according to plan, you might say. White plays here. White's going to finish off the squeeze. And then White would probably play here next. So uh, you must note that this point is a fairly big point that White is probably going to play next. But Black's winning percentage is something like 95%. So you can see the game is supposed to be over at this point. But um, AlphaGo is suggesting the moves. But in actuality, there's an operator who is inputting the moves to the oh, internet. Oh, no. I think so I know what you're going to say. Instead of playing here, which was the suggestion oh. by AlphaGo, <laughs> the operator uh, apparently misclicked, dropped the stone. And I get the feeling that like Black was um, bringing the mouse from that part yeah, of the board, and it was going diagonally we, we've all, towards... We've all done it. It was we've going towards it. this point. Like, you can, you can sort of envisage a diagonal <laughs> here in which the the operator's hand was trying to move, but uh, the, the stone was dropped here. But wait a minute, wait a minute. But the, the, what happens, so 95%. 95%? And then... And then what do you mean? There goes well, all those. I, I, there goes all the. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't look good, right? This I is thought a problem. That this must be a winning game for. Uh, I think if it was human, human, uh, there's a strong possibility that white, uh, that black would just resign at this point, <laughs> and so white would actually have some potential to win. But it turns out that um, the computer analysis actually still gives black a winning percentage. Um, black not is not ahead not by something like nine points before Kung. So not ninety-five percent, but. It's Still. more like 60, 60, so 64, maybe. Something oh, that's, like that is what that's I saw. too funny. Oh, my God. You know, I've actually, I, I remember this happening uh, years and years ago. I think I was probably a double digit game, you know, Q player. And, you know, I was, I was getting clobbered by like a million points. And, and the same thing, this guy makes a mistake and I capture something. But it wasn't nearly enough. And he resigned. And, and I was just smart enough to keep my mouth shut. Uh huh. Very good. <laughs> you know, but he he was uh, instead of instead of it's like it's like in here instead of being ninety five percent chance of winning he had a sixty percent chance of winning which was more than enough. So mm -hmm. that is that is just wonderful. That that's a that's very very special. So well so folks who have something to look forward to Michael will will get more into. I can't wait to see because uh, you know sixty percent still so it's a lot closer though. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's good to know. I, you know. I don't think I realized that I was just assuming that AlphaGo was just playing on the net, so I didn't realize that there was a human operator. So no, it wasn't uh, directly connected. I think they were very protective of AlphaGo. Oh, sure. They no, it totally makes sense. They didn't now want they, to risk yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. No, it absolutely. I, I, I should have realized that. So very cool, very cool game, uh, as usual. Wonderful stuff. Thank you, Michael. I hope everybody enjoyed this. This was a special one. Uh, that'll do it for this game. I uh, hope you're enjoying them, and uh, stay tuned. We'll see you next time.